On December 9, 1957, an incredible event occurred within the UK. Now known as the Silpho Saucer Incident, it has become known within UFO enthusiast circles as the UK's Roswell. It was a story that was first released within the Yorkshire Post. It told of a mystery disc that was found on the Yorkshire Moors. Scarborough businessman Frank Dickinson, along with two friends, were driving through a place known as Reesty Hill, near the village of Silpho, when their car mysteriously stalled as a glowing object appeared in the sky above them, subsequently landing in the Borax Forest. Mr. Dickinson and his friends bravely pursued the downed craft and found a mysterious metallic saucer in a patch of freshly cindered bracken. Amazingly, when the artifact was cut open, apparently a tiny book was found within made of 17 thin copper sheets covered in 2,000 unknown hieroglyphs. Interestingly, similar hieroglyphics were also supposedly found among the wreckage of the UFO that allegedly crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in June 1947. The remains of the Silpho Moore object were subsequently sent to a London laboratory for examination in 1963, including a perplexing fused section of the metal and plastic which was apparently from the outer casing. Gordon Claringbull, a funded academic from the Natural History Museum who specialized in meteorites and explosives, said in a memo to the Science Museum that he was prepared to wager anything that the pieces of metal were made on Earth. However, although the scientific community was predictably skeptical, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who led the RAF during the Battle of Britain during World War II, examined the Silpho saucer in 1958. He actually believed it was genuine. Describing it as a quote, miniature computer piloted flying saucer, Lord Dowding was openly convinced it was a genuine artifact from space, according to the report in the Yorkshire Post. The results of the analysis found that the artifacts contained an unusually pure set of metals, cast in highly specific ways, fueling the UFO community's interest in the object's fragments. Will more modern specific analysis shed more light on this enigmatic object's origins? We will keep you posted on any future developments. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact, Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the Skeptic Magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So, Skeptic Magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis of his evidence. White was told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, to describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, I think you can say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, 
Sally, New Mexico, etc. If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation. Researcher Isaac Kwa has published some startling yet not widely known details regarding some unusual space debris that was found in northern Saskatchewan in 1968. It is the largest UFO fragment ever found, and was later definitively concluded to have come from space. However, at the time the Canadian military and government could not definitively explain what it was from, and somehow managed to escape the clutches of secrecy. Also the Canadian government has been in a mode of disclosure for some time anyway, making UFO documents available for decades at the archives in Ottawa. Only recently they scanned several thousand documents and put them online. The found space debris is one of a number of known, documented crashes of objects in Canada. If you were a government official, how would you react to receiving an official memo with a title beginning UFO found? What if the memo also referred to a metal fragment, examination of which revealed the exhibit had likely formed part of a vehicle that traveled in outer space, and attached relevant photographs? Well, one Canadian official received such a memo in November 1968, along with related memos and photos of the metal fragment. I do not recall seeing any discussion of this memo in any of the UFO books I've read. Dated the 14th of November 1968 from the F Division of CIB, presumably the Criminal Investigation Branch of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, entitled UFO found in Northern Saskatchewan is one part of a set of documents and photos relating to a piece of metal. This astounding official memo states that examination revealed the exhibit had likely formed part of a vehicle that traveled in outer space. The relevant documents indicate that a 99% titanium fragment with a white, ceramic-like crystalline material on one side was found in or around October 1968, but tests indicated it had been down for more than 90 days in the Wollaston Lake area of Saskatchewan, Canada. This other official memo, dated the 24th of October 1968, discloses that the object was titanium 99% pure, 4 foot long and 2.5 feet wide, and weighed between 10 and 15 pounds. This makes the fragment the largest alien piece from a satellite that has ever landed on Earth. That memo indicates that a local newspaper, the Leader Post, was aware of the find. A handwritten annotation indicates the NRC should release information about the find, including the fact that the RCMP lab identified the object. Yet no media coverage ever happened. Man-made satellites are also supposedly made of aluminium not pure titanium. Here are some crashed satellite images, note, none come close to the alien looking appearance of the Canadian fragment. A report dated the 29th of October 1968 gives the results of a determination of the chemical composition of the object, indicating it was high-purity titanium. Higher than previously believed, freelance artist, known as freelance underscore Zenarchist, accepted a challenge to create a concept of what part of the craft the fragment may have come from. What do you think it is? Was it actually part of a downed UFO? It appears that this is exactly what it was, if you go by publicly disclosed official records. Does this titanium fragment found in Canada answer the greatest question of our age? The following amazing story was published by a David Campbell on a site known as ViewZone. It was a report regarding an incredible find within Oklahoma, subsequently chased up by David and his wife on location. Although the story gained very little media attention, the details along with the photographs of the event we have found extremely interesting, especially when we took into account our previous research regarding this strange ancient anomaly known as Waffle Rock, a half-buried suspected fragment of a once larger object of possible alien origins, which has remained half-buried 
resting where it struck the Earth all those years prior, now submerged underwater as the result of a controversial reservoir project which swallowed the stone and the town which had built up around it. David recalled the event with his wife on the site. They had just returned from a weekly 600-mile distribution route to find a somewhat urgent message from a reader in Colbert, Oklahoma. The caller gave some extremely vague instructions on getting to the place. No names and no callback details. Intrigued by the story, they figured the worst that could happen was that they would have a nice Sunday in the mountains. After getting to the vague location given, and after several hours of searching the woods, they eventually came across an extremely peculiar-looking, possibly cyclopean wall. Their initial investigations baffled them. They had never seen ancient stone structured in such a way. They highly suspected that it was of artificial origin due to the small apparent stones tightly interlocking which made up its structure. It wasn't until they climbed the top that they must have realized the true scale of their discovery. From the other side, the stones appear to be a highly complex arrangement of interlocking different mineral or metallic compounds, often displaying a honeycomb structure, the layers of which a result of highly accurate cast layers stacked together to make interlocking blocks of iron-like stone. He recalled on the site, quote, What I saw there began to seep into my brain like ice water. Jumbled about in haphazard fashion were acres of squared, dressed, and notched stones. It was eerie standing on those shattered ramparts with all those tumbled stones like a desecrated cemetery. End quote. Were these strange fragments, possibly once a single and very large object? They clearly share similarities with Waffle Rock, which is located in West Virginia. Are both these anomalous items connected? Were they once part of a very old and now semi-fossilized alien craft? What David has discovered may be another piece of the puzzle regarding the Waffle Rock mystery. Often, cases of strange rocks made up of strange metals are attributed to furnace activity. Yet I hope more investigation into this clearly huge and perplexing site is undertaken. How could this strange object possibly have come to be resting, broken into fragments within an Oklahoma forest? Another strange object made from a similar anomalous mineral metallic-like material is the ancient Baltic Sea anomaly. Are both of these strange artifacts ancient spaceships? More details regarding David and Sue's curious discovery is clearly needed. We will keep you posted. We previously covered an intriguing discovery made within a forest in Oklahoma, discovered by David Campbell and his wife while following up on a curious lead. This discovery, as previously discussed, is a compelling link to Waffle Rock, another anomalous relic we've previously covered. Embedded in the dirt where it struck the ground many years prior, numerous specialists have postulated that it could be a fragment of an artificial craft which disintegrated in the sky. What was astonishing regarding David's discovery was the similar structure of the object which they discovered, also partially buried and scattered amongst the woods, possibly the debris of this once enormous craft created using an intricate layering design of unknown metals, minerals, and alloys. Although further studies of this compelling discovery have yet to be established, it is with understandable caution that those with knowledge of the area move forward. It must be noted that Waffle Rock, once a local landmark, had attracted a flurry of attention from geologists, scientists, and ufologists who had begun to ponder its unique and otherworldly characteristics. That was until the United States government moved in and submerged the artifact under several meters of water. The entire town which had built up around this ancient object were forced out to make way for a reservoir which flooded the entire area. We have therefore undoubtedly been compelled to research further regarding David's amazing discovery, also due to our extensive understanding of the studies undertaken upon Waffle Rock and this site's similarities with such. And unsurprisingly, we've not been disappointed with what's been unearthed. It seems folks have been fully aware of the unusual, quote, mineral deposits within the Oklahoma area for quite some time. 
it seems possible that the entire area is an ancient crash site of a once enormous alien craft. Known as the Oklahoma Mystery Stones, could these unexplainable fragments have once been part of an ancient spaceship? Found throughout Oklahoma, they are often mistaken for man-made objects, this clearly being due to their artificial appearance. And Oklahoma is not the only place we feel there could indeed be fragments of an ancient alien craft which crashed here on Earth. The founder of Mystery History gained access to detailed sonographic imagery showing the bottom of the Baltic Sea late last year. And now, due to the findings which were chased up by mainstream media outlets in early January, several other independent investigators surrounding Ocean X's discovery have arrived at the same suspicions. We strongly feel, due to our research, that the Baltic Sea anomaly is but a fragment of a much larger crash area which covers the seabed. Could these two objects have been part of the same ancient event? It seems while trying to solve one mystery surrounding these anomalies, you will often be confronted with several more. As always, thanks for watching.